All right, David Harry here, and what it is, I'm just going to show you a quick example of editing from an external USB-C SSD drive. Now, what it is, if you kind of look up into the corner somewhere up here right now, it'll take you to a video showing a recent build that I did, or basically not even a build, it's just basically <laughs> putting an SSD inside a case. Um, so basically just an external one terabyte USB-C SSD. So I'm going to do here is show an example of using the very same one just to show that you can actually uh, well basically do video editing from an external USB-C SSD now just before I kick in here let me just show you and uh, let's see there it is attached there so as you can see that's the U green case and it's titled external one terabyte SSD so that's the actual external one terabyte there so if I go and find the, the disk here where is it That'll be the one external one zero byte SSD. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to launch a project from here. So just bear in mind, this is all launching and all the media and everything is inside the external one terabyte. So if you have a look in there, if you go into this folder here, there's all the consolidated media for this particular edit. What it is, there was a ton more media associated with this one, but I've just consolidated it so it's only using the media that's necessary. Okay. So let me just launch this. Oh, by the way, I use Edius by Grass Valley, which um, there's no argument. It is the best NLE ever made. Okay, so here we go. Now, as we can see here, uh, I have 16 tracks of audio. Now, the reason why I'm showing this particular example is because this one is going to push the access and read speeding of anything where the or from any location where the media is located obviously in this instance externally on the USB C SSD so what's important to note here is that although I don't have 16 channels of video playing at any one time the NLE has to know that it can get access to anything across them channels, as it were. So basically, there's a whole bunch of media. Some of this stuff was actually, say, varying angles, so like an establishing wide, like left and right and close-ups, which were taken of the entire take of the song. And then there's various ones in there which are just shorter clips, like, you know, very specific close-ups to do with drums and bass and guitar and stuff like that. And then, like, you know, kind of like facial stuff and whatnot but nonetheless no matter what's used the NLE has to have access to all that media and get at it really fast hence why there's 16 video tracks there like I say not much not much of this crosses over so it's not using two at once at any point like that but it nonetheless needs to access all that really quickly so let me just run a little bit of the track for you Okay, so I'll just give us a quick idea as to, you know, how well that that's playing through. And as we could see there, that went through a number of clips. And none of them clips are hardly associated with the same piece of media. Um, so, I mean, th there might be one piece of media that's used twice across to you know two of these video tracks but in general they're all completely different bits of media being randomly accessed off the ssd now if i just come to the end here somewhere what i'll do let me just run through this because i think there's some fast cutting going on here yeah okay there we go now again what i'm pointing out here is that in order for this edit to work properly in real time, the data itself or the video media files have to be accessible and read fast enough in order to maintain real time uh, capabilities. The other thing as well, um, I mean, th all this media is all messed up as well. It's had stuff done to it in the timeline. Now, this doesn't really rely upon the speed of the media drive as such, although sometimes, you know, the uh, the NLE that you're using may well be caching back to the same drive and stuff, so it might be making temps or something or just using basic cache files. So in that instance, let me just show you typically what's going on here. So this clip here, for instance, it's got a stabilizer on, so if I let go of that... There we go, you can see it pop in a bit. So that's the stabilizer. Now it's got a layouter on it. 
and basically layout it is just a way for me to reshape the uh, the frame because as you can see here I'm actually operating in a timeline which is what is it it's 2.35 or 2.34 to 1 so that's the aspect ratio so if we go and take the layout off as we can see there there's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio of the original shot so obviously what I'm doing on a pair shot basis I'm just going in and reshaping it to make it all fit in that you know in the new aspect ratio actually just a very quick edit here what it is I've been trying to do this in one take and I'm in the edit right now and I'm thinking hold on there's a bit of information I kind of glossed over there which actually is very important what it is the project itself is a variation of HD so let me just show the project settings so it's 1920 by 800 so effectively we are in 1080 or effectively 1920 but we're using an aspect ratio here of roughly there about 2.35 2.4 to 1 so effectively that's what's given us this particular shape here now the reason why I'm doing that is because I didn't want to black bar it in a 16.9 space so I've actually gone to a native aspect ratio of 2.35 2.4 to 1 and as you can see that's HD but the media itself is UHD 4k so as you can see there 3840 by 2160 now also I'm using the Grass Valley HQX codec now what that basically is telling us as well is that the hard drive is working or the SSD is working a lot harder than what it would have done with the original files the original files were only at 100 megabits per second because they were XAVCS so what I've done is done a transcode of them to HQX by Grass Valley and that's just because this is an intraframe codec whereas the other one is an interframe so interframe is easier to edit but at the same time if they're a lot bigger and the bandwidth and data rates are a lot higher the reason why that's poignant is because this particular edit is actually really pushing the data rates for all the randomly accessed media that's going on so effectively we're using UHD 4k at fairly high bit rates and then we're reducing it down into a 1080 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio project and in doing so the SSD has to work a lot harder doing this edit compared to what it would have done if it was using the original XAVCS files. Okay, so with that done, let me just carry on with the rest of the video. And then also I've got a color corrector going on there. So that's the original shots because it was in color and basically I've just kind of crushed it and blown it to bits into black and white. So effectively that's happening on all these like individual cuts here. So every single one of them has got something of a stabilizer a layout uh, and obviously the generally it's the it is the same primary color corrector just to get it all crushed and blown into like into a mono um but like i say that type of stuff there doesn't really the, the the external drive or the media drive itself doesn't really come into play unless the NLE that you use and is actually using caching and stuff and temps to that drive um i'm not doing that at the moment because this is all in real time let's see what else can i show oh actually uh, let's see so if we go to finally this is just a sequence in sequence of the same thing and what we can see here is that there's no layout on it because it's it, it the shape of it is all correct now for the aspect ratio um, but the primary color corrector that I'm using is doing a bit more so I wasn't happy that I'd blown it out and crushed it enough in the original edit so I just went and blown it and crushed it more there <laughs> now what I'll do here let me just show uh, some of the uh, the transport functions occurring so here's the nudge function oh wait there I lied so here's, here's me nudging now as we can see that's nudging really quickly we should be able to hear that properly so what that is indicating to us is that yes we're accessing that data really quickly now what i'm going to do let me just do some jkl stuff while it's running Time. 
Okay, now the point of me, what I was doing there with the nudging and the JKL functions is that as you could hear, you probably can hear my keyboard clicking as I'm doing this. And you can hear that in relation to the speed and the start of the actual timeline or the transport of the timeline. Let's just try that again. So as you can see there, it's all intent and purpose. That is immediate. And so the JKL functions and the stop and start functions. And again, that's relying upon access time and reading of the media. And of course, now, even though this is, you know, a sequence in sequence, it is still all of them edits there that, that it's applying it to. So once again, just showing you that, you know, the drive is really fast at reading. Okay, so I, I think that's probably enough there. Uh, it was just a basic thing just to show people that, yes, you can do a ton of stuff with it. And uh, also, you can edit from these external disks as well, or these external SSDs. Also, as well, if you're interested in the actual full video of this particular pop promo, it's a couple of years old. It's just uh, something that I produced for one of my friends. There'll be a link uh, uh, somewhere on the screen at the moment, and also a link in the descriptions below. All right, then. So let us know anyway what you think of this, uh, you know, whether this has helped you or anything, and maybe it's something that you might want to try yourself using an external USB-C SSD. Okay, so if you've liked it, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel, share the video, all that kinds of stuff. And I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.